Howdy folks, now Darren has turned up, DB Transport Darren, Darren who bought the TW, you know what I'm about. Um, now he took the, um, the brake and clutch master and sleigh cylinders off a couple of weeks ago. Well anyway, he's back today. They've been at Past Parts Limited, um, which is in Bury St Edmunds, do all, basically all brake parts like this for basically anything old, anything that's really difficult to get uh, new or pattern parts for. So um, basically all cleaned up, stainless sleeves in there and everything like so. They're basically as good as new and like a 10 day turnaround on it, can't beat it and uh, he should be good to go. So we're chucking these on today. We've got uh, various senders as well to put on there. Hopefully she'll be back alive. Yeah. Whenever you're ready. How steady a hand have you got? I mean, it might be an idea for a funnel. I oh, I oh, I oh, 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 straight down. It's already down the side of it. Look at that. Hopefully that's going to run down the bottom. Slay cylinders down there. Can't see from here. What if it's coming out? Yeah, I'm at the wrong angle. Okay. Oh, that sounded good. We're just bleeding it at the minute. Yeah, getting a bit of resistance to the pedal. So this is basically getting the air out of the system. Hold in. No. Getting quite low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is basically every time you push the pedal down, you push it all out, then you um, close the little bleed valve, or the minute Darren's putting his finger over it, um, before you let it back. Because if I let the pedal back up, it'll let air back in. Now, yeah, 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 we'll try again. There's a good bit of pressure there. Up, oh. oh, yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. Oh. Oh. Just be weeping out of the um, banjo bolt there. Am I starting it then? Well, let's check this out of gear first. Right. It's out of gear. Go on then, turn the key. Don't we need to touch down? No. Uh, yeah. Um, no. That way. No. Hold on. That's it. There we go. Definitely. Wipe her off. Throw in the hole, hopefully. Oh. Well, that's 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 great. I don't know why that is. Why? Wrong ohms uh, resistance on the sender. There was uh, choices. Oh, uh, was there? Oh yeah. Only about, <laughs> only about fifteen. <laughs> is that all? Yeah. So I went with one that seemed like it did the widest band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That went up then when it first started. It did. It did go up a bit, it really, didn't it? Well, it went all the way to the top. Yeah. And it went back to zero. Back to zero. Like. I think it's just gone over resistance. On yeah. The, on the sender. Yeah, yeah. So the gauge has just dropped off. So we need to know what ohms really then. Right. So she should now be fairly fit. Um, so Darren's put the, uh, the clutch and brake master cylinders back on after it's been to, um, after they've been refurbished by Pass Parts Limited, Bury St Edmunds, made a very nice job of them. Uh, so yeah, basically honed them out, stainless steel sleeve, jobs, you know, new seals and everything, jobs are good. Um, so clutch and brake now should work 
in theory, perfectly. So, um, and all the gauges now, apart from the, uh, oh, the coolant gauge, are working. So, it's all good. And we're hopefully, uh, um, the coolant sender is just a simple, um, is quite a generic part. So, shouldn't be too hard to get one, of, to get hold of one of them. So we will fire up, open the door first. We have to take it for a test drive, haven't we? Out of gear. Fry in the hole. Or not. Hold on. I've got all the lights now, look at this. All the lights. Waiting. Is this something new that it's started doing? No, but it's not going to fire. So, because Darren's been fiddling. <laughs> um, we think it's got what's called a Murphy valve on it, so that it automatically turns the engine off if... Um, yeah, see that, yeah, look, that engine temperature light's gone off now. I'm betting that'll start. There she, there she is. There's the engine temperature light. No. So that's coming on. So it didn't used to do that. There you go. See, that's quite an odd thing. It never used to do that. So whether we've just jiggled the wire or something, again, you don't know, do you, like? But it's then it sort of then just fires up and everything goes out. So strange, strange. But um, yeah, I mean it still fires. We've got um, engine oil pressure gauge back again, which is good. Engine oil pressure light now works where it lights up on the ignition and then goes out. Same as the engine temperature light, although that you know that's possibly. Yeah, something to do with this Murphy's valve, I don't know. That is coming, hopefully, for the uh, for the gauge and the transmission pressure light um, and the temp, I think, they have both light up and go out. So, yeah, it's all good. Right, I might actually try it. The first, this is the first time I'm gonna see if it moves. So we'll select second, brake is off, see what happens. Well we're moving boys. A bit tight through here. See if it stops. Brakes work as well releases that's what the brakes were working but they sometimes wouldn't release a bit like the clutch actually so it's been a good i don't know a good month that she's um roared into life so that brake third gear that could be fifth actually that is top gear i think <laughs> So we can thread the uh, the gateway there at speed. Water's still up a bit, like.
All good, boys. All good. She's out sweet. No big trail of all behind us. Clutch and brake are working, working treat, so let's just stop a minute and um, put the handbrake on. Let's have a look round her. Make sure she ain't peeing oil out. Oh well, job is a good and she's back to work boys, so um, I mean whether we're going to do any plan with her this year or not I don't know, hopefully, hopefully we will, but it's not guaranteed, I mean it's all, <laughs> it's all weather dependent isn't it, so um, you know, we've only got to look over there to see how wet it is about, so we'll have to wait and see, but we just want that one piece of the plough and then the plough's ready as well, apart from putting it all together like, you know. But uh, at least that is, well, apart from the gauge now, the coolant gauge, which is good. You know, well, it's, it's mobile again, that is the main thing anyway, look. See, I've got the CHC nav system steering wheel on there. It is basically ready now, auto steer ready. One thing left I've got to do is just put the uh, ram mount bracket on the side of the cab there so it can take the monitor. Put the looms in, the brackets are in for the dome, steering wheel's on obviously. So, um, yeah. I'm, you know, I've am you never used uh, an Arctic on auto steering before, so I'd be interested to see how, how the system works as well. Like, I know of at least one other FW, well it's an FW60 that's working in the UK that's got um, auto steer on it. So it can be done. So, great success. So I think I asked this on one of the previous videos. What would you take out of these two? Would you go for the modern comfort of the T7? Or would you take the old school grunt of the FW30? What would you choose? Anyway. Hope you enjoyed that little vid. See you on the next one. Ta-ta.